Well, this is the fourth Sunday of Lent, and we are getting closer and closer to Palm Sunday. And that means we're getting closer and closer to Easter. We continue to have this candle here as a symbol of the light burning through this process as we take this journey toward Jesus' death. As well, we have candles burning in the background. On this, first, on this fourth Sunday of Lent, the theme is the wisdom of mistakes. The wisdom of mistakes. Two ladies take a, a road trip. They take a road trip from Providence, Rhode Island, to Portland, Oregon. They do the whole thing on back roads. Basically, they took the longest route possible, getting from one destination to another. Somewhere in Dakota, Katherine Schultz turns to her friend and asks a question that has been bothering her for 2,000 miles. What's up with the Chinese characters I keep seeing on the side of the road? Her friend looks at her blankly, confused, trying to understand. So she tries to explain the sign. Her friend continues to stare, and then she begins to laugh. Her friend says, oh, that's not a Chinese sign, silly. That's a picnic area symbol. Katherine Schultz researches how we misunderstand the signs around us. She spent five years thinking about being wrong. While we get being wrong in the abstract, what she has found that in the present tense, in the present reality, being wrong goes out of the window. She asserts that being wrong feels like being right until that moment when we really recognize that we are wrong. Today we enter this Bible with the popular story about the prodigal son who was ready to get his inheritance and bounce. After living in a house with rules and structure and strictness, he was ready to get out and do his thing. He was ready for the world until he wasn't. Father, give me a share of the property that will belong to me. I got this, let me go and live my life. He was a perfect example of what Catherine refers to as someone who is so wrong, but thinks that they are right. He was burning to go and live his life without the restrictions of an overbearing parent. He was eager to get out. He just wanted to go. He wants to get away from his family. He wants to do his own thing. He wants to live his life. And the text tells us with his inheritance in hand. A few days later, the younger son gathered all he had and traveled to a distant country, and there he squandered his property and dissolute living. In other words, he spent his money and he was broke. He was living it up. The text goes on to say that he threw his morals right on out the door. I'm sure you can use your imagination to kind of think about what this might look like. Those of us on the other side of this mistake can see what is going to happen before it actually happens. It's like reading a story that's kind of predictable. This story is familiar, and it gets replayed in so many coming-of-age memoirs. He's flying until he isn't. When he had spent everything, a severe famine took place throughout the country, and he began to be in need. So it wasn't just his choices, reminding us that not only does life happen in us, but life happens outside of us. Tragedies and wars and catastrophes come that impact us. And now because of the choices he made and what was not only happening in him, but around him, he's broke and he's homeless. This is where Catherine would say he realizes he's wrong. He realizes he's made some mistakes, he realizes I'm in trouble, and none of it feels good. That moment when we realize our mistake. It's like the coyote, remembering the cartoon who runs off the cliff, and he's doing fine until that moment, just before he falls, where he looks down, and he realizes, ah, oh, I've gone too far. There's no turning back. The son learned that he did not know as much as he thought he did. One of the greatest life lessons we can learn is how little we know. Whenever I see someone walking around cocky and thinking they know it all, I have to chuckle. In fact, the longer you live, the more you should realize how little you know. 
We're learning more and more about our earth. We're learning more and more about our bodies. We're learning so much that the folks that wrote this biblical text didn't know. There's so much we don't know. And when we admit it, the door of learning and growing is open to us. Every day, there are lessons there for us to learn if we can get past being invested in being right. I see it often in our culture, in our society, and Catherine raises this up. It's so hard for us to admit we are wrong. It's, it's like being wrong says something about us. There's a cloak of heaviness about being wrong, and so nobody wants to admit it. We'd rather hide it or sweep it under the rug, but we never see them for what they are, opportunities to learn and grow, our mistakes. Did you know Viagra was a mistake? Slinkies were a mistake. Cornflakes were a mistake. The microwave oven was a mistake. Post-it notes were a mistake. Bubble wrap was a mistake. Chocolate chip cookies was a mistake. Mmm. Super glue was a mistake. Jean-Baptiste Jolly was a textile maker. His discovery of the dry cleaning was a mistake. One day while he was working with a kerosene lamp, it got knocked over, which was certainly a mistake. But then he saw something in that mistake. He saw that the kerosene actually made the cloth cleaner, thus giving him an idea for a cleaner. Now, not every mistake will lead to a new invention for sure, but it could lead to a better us. We can learn and grow from our mistakes. You guys remember the story about the hole in the street? I walk down the street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I fall in, I am lost, I am hopeless. It isn't my fault. It takes me forever to find my way out. I walk down the same street, there's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I pretend I don't see it. Guess what happens? I fall in again. I can't believe it. I am in the same place, but it isn't my fault. It still takes a long time to get out. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I see it there. I still fall in. It's a habit, but my eyes are open. I know where I am. It is my fault. I get out immediately. I walk down the same street. There's a deep hole in the sidewalk. I walk around it. I walk down another street. I think sometimes mistakes are the best teachers. I remember this saying, I can show you better than I can tell you. As a church, we are learning. As we try to be vital and sustainable, we have gone down a couple of roads, amen? And they did not lead to the outcome that we thought they would. And that's scary because we know we don't have a lot of financial resources, and yet we are discovering. And we can be proud that we didn't just sit still and do nothing, but that we have tried some things, and we will try some more things. And discovery awaits us, and we are leaning into our faith. And maybe we'll make many more mistakes, but I do believe God will meet us on that journey. Moons ago, I bought a building. I've always thought I've had an entrepreneurial streak. Time has not proven to show that to be true. But me and some friends thought we would make money and we would buy these buildings. And we knew some other people that, and we knew one uh, family in our former church that was a millionaire and they owned these buildings. And oh my God, you guys, I bought this building and I was ready to make money. And I had like the tenants. <laughs> I ended up having to evict every tenant. The moment I took over the building, not one person paid me rent. <laughs> I went to court a whole lot of times. I learned how to write up the papers. I learned how to get them served. I learned what to do in court, and I learned how much it cost. And then after I got out every tenant, I tried to get new ones. And then at some point, I learned that this was not for me. I had made a serious mistake. You know, if money were that easy to get, everybody would be getting it. And so I learned some things about being a landlord. I learned, hey, I wasn't cut up to do this kind of work. You see, mistakes teach us and they wake us up. 
When I was able to admit my mistake, other people came forward saying, hey, you know, I tried that same thing. And then they began to share their stories. My mama Iona told me how they bought a building and she was thinking about she was going to buy a mink and fur and like it was a headache. And she was like, we finally just sold the building and got our money back. Mistakes teach us. Mistakes also wake us up. The son, once he wakes up, he realized, what? I can go back home. I mean, first he had to realize his mistake. And then the text says, so he went and he hired himself out to one of the citizens of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. I don't know if you guys have ever been around to see how pigs live. I grew up in a rural area and my grandmother and my grandfather raised pigs. It is not a pleasant sight at all. It smells, it's a lot of mud, it's a lot of slop and food. And here he was feeding pigs. And in that moment, he says he would gladly have filled himself with the pods that the pigs were eating. That's just how hungry he was. That's just how much he had fallen. But then he had a woke moment. And the text says he came to himself. Why am I still out here? I have a home and I have a parent. So hear me, and this is for someone, maybe not you. No matter what we do, no matter how far or how low we go, we can always go home. Some of us have migrated to Chicago, and so for holidays and special events or any time, we make the journey back home. I was listening to Bell Hooks, who is a devoted person to the topic of love, an avid feminist, and an ally for the LGBTQ community. And towards the end of her life, she packed up all of her stuff where she was living, and she went back home to Kentucky. And she said it was to be close to her parents, but in a relatively short time, she died. I believe she kind of knew, and she decided to go back home. Home is where the heart is. Home is where we feel connected. Home is that place where we feel safe and whole. And the son says, it's time for me to go home. We are going to make mistakes, lots of them. We should embrace it. It shouldn't be a bad thing. Unlike the world, the gospel shows us mistakes are okay. Learn from them. Don't be afraid of them. And when you have made them, there is a God who will always celebrate your return. There was a celebration for the son when he went home. There is a celebration that awaits us when we return home. For me, when I was a kid, going home was like a celebration. You would see all kinds of family members you didn't know, and there would be food and lots of hugs and people that appreciated you. It was a great time. It was like the time apart had made us miss each other more. I got to play with my cousins. And so when the son returns home, the dad is like, let's throw a party. Let's celebrate. You see, my son was out there screwing up. He's fallen and he was out there. Did you hear me? He was out there, but he has come to his senses. He has woken up. He's not the son that left home. You see, my son has come home and he's changed. His mistakes have taught him. I've gained a son who has made some mistakes and he has returned home and he's a wiser person than when he left. And I am happy. I am so happy. Years ago, I was at another church and this guy who embezzled money from the church, which it seems like every church has experienced somebody that embezzled funds, maybe because we're so trusting. But this guy took some checks, he filled them out, and he cashed him. They loved him, and then he departed like the prodigal son, and he stayed away for a while. Because of the great Bible teachings, the congregation was happy to receive him. And so even though he had embezzled funds when he returned back, it was kind of like the prodigal son. I was new to the church, so I was like, what's going on? Are everybody's excited about this guy? What, who is he? Who, who, what is he up to? The congregation on that day demonstrated to me how we embrace those who make mistakes. Not that we don't hold them accountable too, but how we embrace people who make mistakes when they realize they've made a mistake and when they return home. We've all made mistakes and even if we only admit it to ourselves, 
We've made a lot of mistakes, and yet we have survived. We have lived through them. We have learned from them, and we are better people because of them. And some of us have even grown wise because of some of the mistakes and the lessons we learn from them. And we serve a God united, who no matter how many mistakes we make, our God embraces all of God's kids when they come home. Amen. <laughs>